Hey guys, in this video I want to explain my process of setting up payment in any bubble app. Um, I was always believing in common misconception that setting up payment is something super complex and uh, hard and require a lot of time and effort. But then I realized that it's not the case. It is a common mis misconception that setting up payment is complex. You need plugins to set up everything properly. You need to use some external code. Uh, like over complicating over complicating things my view on this is setting up payment can be simple it is fast to do you can learn it once understand the concept of this how how, how to set it up properly and then you can reuse it from app to app again and again i need to introduce here the concept of webhook i think you like already know what is this if you're building apps but to understand the webhooks is to understand the process uh of, of setting up payment of my way of setting up payment so uh, leveraging webhooks let you spend uh, less time setting up workloads yourself and rely on, or, or, on events that will be sent to you from servers of payment providers. It can be like Stripe provider, Lemon Squeezy and others. Like they all offer webhooks. I will show you an example in a second. So what is this? Uh, as soon as um, an event happened, a user created subscription, user canceled subscription, user changed some data. You don't need to always checking it checking for the for the uh, for the information change you rely on the stripe uh, on the stripe da data and as soon as the stripe notice that something uh, changed they send you an event to you and you listen to this event on your app and then based on this event then you then you received you change some data you add some logic to it so let's let's go to the to the actual app and i will show it uh, to you there Right now we are in uh, Lemon Squeezy account. This is really similar to the Stripe, but uh, I use, personally use Lemon Squeezy more often, so I will show you it there. You need to go to the webhook tab and I add a couple of webhooks. The most important to us is update event and create event. Uh, this is, the, as I said, the same to Stripe. So you will find the same names there and uh, basically the same concepts of, of, uh, of um, setting it up. So uh, first you choose the events. As I said, you need to separate for bubble app, you need two separate uh, webhooks and also two separate version of webhooks, one for live version, one for test version. So one webhook will be uh, listening for subscription created event. The second one will be, will be listening to subscription updated event. And uh, you have two versions, as I said, it is really important from for live and for test version. Now we go to the bubble app. What we see here, uh, we need a payment, uh, payment plan with bubble to be able to go to the backend workloads tab here and set, a, set it up properly because we need to backend workloads to listen to this event. We can do this on the client side. We created two separate, uh, two separate backend workloads that that um, set it up to the detect request data tab, and uh, we listening to the post event. Uh, when you first create the workflow, this type of workflow, for example, I will uh, show it to you. We will call this test. And, and you, if you will, um, if you will uh, check the detect requested data, you will see that we have on the end this initialize. First, we, we, see, we see the the link, then the API. This is the, the same for everything version test because we are using the, right now the version test uh, workflows. We add wf test the name of the workflow and initialize. Let's go here. Uh, we see. The, this is kind of similar to, from workload to workload, but here we don't we don't see we don't see the initialize. Why it's like this? Because first, when you initialize in the workload when you first created it, you set up this window here. You will click on this and don't close it, and then you need to trigger this workload. Uh, it, it can be like. You can manually go to the bubble app for example and create a subscription yourself to trigger it or you can um, use some third party apps that let you trigger the the webhooks you can just google it to learn more about it my my common approach is is do it manually i just go and create subscription to trigger this event as soon as you initialize it you 
uh, go to the to the stripe or lemma squeezy and remove the initialized because all the next workflows will be triggered on already initialized um, webhook. You don't need initialized word no more. So this is really important. First, you create this initialized word on it. You trigger it in bubble. The bubble, uh, the bubble will hide the window of this of this workflow. It will show it. It will show them the types of data that you receive right here, and then you you remove the initialized and you start you start working on this. Uh, you start using this workflow and uh, uh, across your app. So this is the concept. Create uh, two workflows. Initialize it properly, set up the two webhooks for test version, two webhooks for live version. Again, to, to set it up, all you need to do is, is as soon as you initialize everything on test, you remove the initialized word, duplicate the workloads, and uh, change the test word to live, version live, version test. That's all. Okay, let's go really fast. Uh, let's let's walk, walk through what we are doing with this. So as soon as we create in the subscription, I'm just creating the data type that I have in my database, bubble database, with the stuff that I received from request data. So as the same for Stripe, same for Lemon Squeezy. As soon as we receive the, the webhook, we receive all the necessary information. It can be a user email, user, um, user ID. I open send, uh, or I also send in the, on the payment, on, on the checkout. Uh, on the checkout, uh, checkout site, I send a, a meta tag of user ID, so I can then listen to the to the webhook with this meta tag, and uh, create a subscription with the given user ID. So I can filter the user by ID and add all the necessary information. This is super common, super simple, as you can see here. So I just edit from I just fill in these gaps with data from what, what I received from the webhook and make a change to the user. I'm adding this subscription saving to the to the field of the on the user side. On update side, a little bit more uh, complex, but still easy. As soon as we received a subscription update, update uh, subscription webhook triggered like most common uh, common workflow. It triggered every time something something updated. It triggered first time when the subscription is created, and then if, if the user changes some payment data, some names, or maybe some um, he cancels subscription, he reactivated subscription. So it's kind of one go like go to solution for everything. And this is kind of the easier way because then you can just inside the workflow check what type of action happened, and based on action do some logic to uh, add some add some uh, process into your bubble app and change the appropriate fields. So all, all we need to do we ju just for example you know, in, in this in this site I check in for request data attribute status is cancelled. So this way I, I check if if the action is is cancelled subscription and if yes making some logic changing the the type of the subscription on the my bible database. Then I check in is active yeah, uh, here. So I checked if it's cancelled, if it's no, skip. Now, next I check in if it's active, yes, it's, it's still active. Okay, what changed? I check in, I'm I changing all the fields that is changed and uh, user email, user username, so I'm updating. If it's active, I'm just updating the data that user changed. That's all. So this is kind of all, all it's there. The, 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 more, the most complex part is actually in, inside the update, check for the type of action. Because when it's cancelled, you need to do some like t type A of actions. Yeah, you need to go this way. If it's still active, you need to go this way. Because the subscription is active, you just need to change the, uh, the fields on, on the user side. So basically, this is all about it. Let's walk through one more time. Uh, we go to the, our dashboard of the payment provider we are using, Stripe or Lemon Squeezy or etc. We created two webhooks for the test, two webhooks for the live. We listen for, so, for subscription created event and subscription updated event. As soon as we as we as we uh, finish with this, we go to the actual app. We create two workflows on the backend side. We initialize it properly. As soon as we initialize the data. Uh, by, by triggering the webhook manually or using the, some third-party tool, we are removing the initialized word from the workflow, so so we can use it. So uh, because if you see if we with initialized word, the next workflows will not be will not trigger event on our side because the workflow is already initialized. As soon as we're ready, we remove the words uh, initialized word in it. We saved everything. Okay, we are ready to we are ready to to use it. 
we listening to create on the create uh, event we creating subscription and updating the user with this subscription on update we have two ways on the cancel side on still active side so basically this is this let me know if you have still if you still have any question or, or need through the assistance maybe i can help you with this I'll leave some comments all my contact data will be will be below this video if you need to connect me on the some custom questions or you need how to build your your app or need some assistance just let me know uh hope you guys like it uh leave your thoughts comments below appreciate you and see you next time bye bye